then tell us about working with probationers. So I, I get asked this all the time, what is it like to work with a probationer? Um, when I joined the job and I went out, you got thrown with a really experienced cop and it was petrifying. It was really, really scary because they were proper old school, old arts, proper wool on the back, didn't stand for any shit, told it how it was. And now I've got to that point of 19 years in my career, probationers had to do a, a stint in traffic and they turn up and they'd be right nice, but all I can say is a lot of them were really wet behind the ears. You know, they were, they've never been fast, they've never been in a fast car or like that, never been to a bump or seen someone arms missing, legs missing, but they were really, really good in what they did. They were really, um, how can I put it, push themselves forward, they wanted to get in mix, they wanted to learn. Um, and I remember one lad uh, called Amza, real nice lad, really good, solid earth lad. And I can't remember if it were either his first day, official day on the job, um, or it was his first, within his first week and his tutor had gone off sick, so they were trying to find a new tutor. Uh, so they rung up and says, can you take this lad out? I said, yeah, not a problem at all. So meet him and he's right softly spoken. Uh, Hello, Ben, I'm, I'm Anza. Nice to meet you, Anza, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, does it, does, what happens? Do we get in there? Does it, does it all happen quickly and does, does this happen? And I said, well, we t- take every day as it comes and you know, it, we might not get out today, we might get one ticket, uh, we might struggle, uh, or we might get a big job. So we'd literally been in car about five minutes and we set off through Shipley towards Bingley and we got an AMPR it of a stolen car just taking a burglary. So within two seconds, we're going up, cutting the cliff road um, towards Bingley, uh, sorry, towards Heaton and this car comes past. Amza sat there with this look on his face of pure concentration, trying to get the registration number of the car um, and trying to pick the radio up uh, to say we're going to be giving comments to what's going on set the radio off him, spin the car around, and that second we're, we're engaged in this pursuit. Like I said, it's his first day off, within the first week. This is completely out of his comfort zone. So we're chasing his car, 90 miles an hour, 30 mile an hour limit, been taking a burglary, far up. Car goes left, heads towards Shippy Golf Club. It's all over the road, weaving, doing commentary, extra Romeo, 5-2, vehicles failing to stop. Turn around, look at Amazon, he's holding onto the car like this. He's like, face of, it's pure fun for him, it's brilliant. He's like, Having a, having a bit of fun in car and he's, he's, he's loving it. T- chase his car and it goes down towards Shippy Golf Club. So anyone that's watching that knows where Shippy Golf Club is, it's a right little thin path that goes to Shippy Golf Club and it goes up and down, up and down. It's got a big hill on one side, you can't drive your car up, trees on the right hand side, a small um, brick wall down 15 foot into the river. We're sort of after this car and all we can see is balls of dust and we shout, yeah, it's going on to Keefe Golf Club, or sorry, Shipper Golf Club, Shipper Golf Club. And then we just see it clips wall, clips its embankment, and it just rolls. It just about 15 spins, hits its roof, it's, it's the uh, the banking, bounces off a tree, and just bursts into flames. Just woof, like that. First thing I see is, oh, fucking hell, it's all gone wrong as this, hasn't it? Skip car up, me and Amazon start running towards car, can flames coming out of car? Go back and get a first, uh, fuck it, it's not bad my head, is it? Go back and get a, a fire extinguisher. So we run back, get a fire extinguisher. Amber's just running up and down, Amber's running up and down. No one knows what's going on. We're trying to shout on his radio, crash, crash, crash. There's bodies in the road. There's this, shouting and bawling and doing all this stuff. So we end up getting the car, spraying the car with foam, and then still on fire, and there's four people trapped in this car. One of them's a bit of a big girl. So if you are watching them, I do apologise. First thing that criminals do is when they're, when, when they're hurt, they'll try and run, and the fuck you pig, get a real job. But as soon as they're hurt, it's like, oh, officer, don't hurt me, officer, get me an ambulance, this sort of thing. So, windows and car were smashed. Lent in, and there's a girl there, oh, officer, I've hurt my neck. Get out of the fucking car, it's on fire. Get out of this car, you're going to burn to death. So, we grabbed her out neck, and we pulled her out of this bloody car. Pulled them all out, they were far in this car, and they're all laid at side of the road, then Alice Bankman. Oh, I need it. I think I brought my arm, I brought my back, I've done this officer crying. I don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck. I'm not bothered, as long as you haven't killed anybody else, you lay down on the floor and you get dealt with, you get dealt with. So I eventually put car out, and I'll never forget it to this day. I remember Amza, when we're pulling this girl out of the car, he looked at me and he says, are we in trouble? Are we in trouble? I says, no, you're not in trouble, mate, but I think I'm going to be going to prison. 
I think I'm going to be getting locked up for this. Because uh, we actually thought one of them were going to die. And because it were on flames, it was such a bad job. Uh, we got back to Nick. Um, we dealt with what we dealt with. And then because we were the pursuing vehicle in the class that was a serious police RTC, we just told us to go straight back to Nick. Vehicles stayed where they were for investigation purposes. And all the video had to be downloaded. And me and Ams went back to Nick. And when he got to, back to Nick, you could see it look on his face. He's gone from nothing, literally knowing nothing, and doing nothing. Then we've been spared five minutes. He's chased a stolen car with four burglars in it. That's rolled, that's bursting at flames. And not only that, he's dealt with scene. Um, he's used a fire extinguisher. He's put car out of its flames. He's pulled people from the vehicle and he started to do the first initial, how can I put it, lockdown at scene and do his job, making sure it's all safe. If it weren't for Hamza being there, I'd struggle like fuck. If it weren't for Hamza being there, and even his complete lack of knowledge on the job, I'd have probably lost my head a bit more than what I, I did do, if that makes sense. It's when you've got an oppo, you bounce backwards and forwards. It doesn't matter how much knowledge they've got, it's about their enthusiasm for the job, if that makes sense. And then we got put forward for the Royal something like the Royal Humanitarian Bravery Award or something like that we got put forward for, but we uh, we, we didn't get it. I think the person that got it got for pulling four people out of a, a submerged car underwater. It was something like that. Um, but he got, a, he got a big award. He had to go in front of stage in front of people and they all applauded him and stuff like that. Really, really. In fact, I think I've got an image of that somewhere. So if you can go like that and I'll try and put it up. Um, but yeah, I think his world changed from that moment in time, knowing how quickly life can change and how quickly you can be on the edge of a, a knife and fall one way or another way. Um, if it had gone wrong, I'd probably, if someone had died, I'd probably, probably go to prison for dangerous driving, pursuing his car. Um, but it didn't go wrong, it went really well. But yeah, probationers, like I said, they might be wet behind ears when they get with you, but they've got an art of gold and they try really hard. And if I'm for Amazon, I'd struggle, so thank you, pal. What advice do you have for anyone who is a probationer and that's sort of learning the ropes, as it were? I always got told, that's a great question, I always got told that by um, my uncle when he joined six months before me, what, well, be a sponge, get in, listen, keep your head down and soak up everything that everyone's telling you. You've got it coming from all directions, but if you just listen, there's too many people that... And this is, as far as I can see, I don't have to make tea. I got told if I make tea, it's bullying. I got told if I don't do this, it's bullying. I got told if I don't have to do this. Now, there's too many people mourning and being more of a snowflake than what else. What people need to do is go into an environment and listen to what people are telling them. They're telling it because it's about your own safety. It's about your own um, police education. It's about doing stuff correctly. Be a sponge, suck it all up and you'll be an awesome Bobby. This is my new book, Cortal Tango 2-3. It's available from Amazon now and click the link below if you want one. Thank you.